my eighth season at the Passion Play. I've acted in the play and directed. He's acted very, twice and directed. Sometimes done it both. Very seasoned. Yeah. So I've been here a little while. Uh, and I jumped in, what, two years? You had been here two years, and then I jumped in. Mm -hmm. And uh, with a new script. And Barrett jumped on board. And, and he tried to take over. Kind of. And uh, I kind of did. And then we've tempered that that urge. Barrett inspired this whole thing. Um, I have ignored the Book of John, or the Fourth Gospel, as some call it, um, because I just didn't think it would translate to this big open stage. With because it's it's very wordy, it's repetitive, and it's poetic, and uh, I didn't think there's enough quote action in it. So and he was pushing on me, going, I think we should do the Gospel of John. Well, it's still the story of Jesus, but uh, I think when we, I mean, something like 70% of John is not in the Synoptic Gospels, so right away you have just different stories that you're being, that are being told. So, so, so immediately that kind of frees us up to say, well, let's forget about what we did before and how we staged it before and what design elements we used before, and let's just take a look at everything new from top to bottom. When 200 people show up on a Saturday morning are looking at you and saying, okay, direct us, tell us what you want mm. us to do. They're eager, they're ready mm. to go, mm. they're prepared. This new script has invigorated them. Mm -hmm. um, and they needed it, frankly, mm -hmm. right? For their own, I mean, they come back and at a certain point when you start to just re, what do they call it, restage the same play and try to improve it, at a certain point it feels like you, it's just a machine every year we just so when this whole new script came we had amazing turnouts for we had uh, workshops in the middle of winter where people would come and read it with us and help critique it and say this is what I think and and, and they came out in the middle of 30 below hanging out with us it was really fun and that excitement from us I'm sure generated into them they got really excited it's the joy of discovery you know they 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 get to discover something new. When you do that as an actor the first time, uh, it has a it has its own life to it, and they get very excited by that. But I just talked to some cast just now, and they said, by far, this is a more emotional journey for the audience. The audience does come down and meet the cast who have just finished bowing, and they, they say it's far more emotional for them. And of course, that exhilarates a cast, right? And that makes me really happy too, because it is a powerful story, amazing story. Mm -hmm. God sent his son into the world so that if we believe, we have everlasting life. The Canadian Badlands Passion Play. The Canadian Badlands Passion Play. That's the name of it. It's been going on for 18 years, and just to show you how well connected I am, I heard about it for the first time last week. Fellas, forgive me. <laughs> yep. I mean, I, why didn't I know about you? The, uh, Vance Newdorf and Stephen Walshman, um, you are the executive director. Correct, yeah. And you play Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, wh why didn't I know about this? I mean, th th this is an amazing thing that's going on. It's, it's an absolute incredible, stunning presentation of the life of Christ. Uh, we consider it to be one of Canada's best kept secrets. And we want to get the word out, which is why we're here. Well, there you go, <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, uh, when it was originated, was it um, trying to follow the model of Oberammergau? It actually had a bit of that to begin with, much more choral uh, music presentation. And that ran its time, and in about 2005, the attendance had dropped off. And the fellow you saw there, Royal Sproul, in the, uh, he wrote a new script and decided to make it drama-based. And that was 2006, and it had 6,000 in attendance. Last year, we had 14,000. So it's just mushroomed. The, the way the story is being told is gripping people. Now, how did you uh, ever manage to get that amazing uh, bit of property? I mean, uh, we're going to look at the trailer here in a minute, and we'll see more of it. But uh, it, it's so, uh, it almost looks like, uh, like northern Israel. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they were basically, they had determined that this was, in the location was somewhere there. And as they were walking around, our two fellows that were working on it, one was on one hill, one was on the other, and, and one said, hey, can you hear me? And the other guy said, yeah, I can hear you. Are you are, you're just hardly talking. And they said, this is the spot. Just this beautiful, natural amphitheater where the voices could be clearly heard. 
and uh, they went and got the land, and away we went. Huh. Uh, before we talk more about it, let's take a look at uh, this trailer, just to acquaint you further with the context under which we're speaking here. The time is coming, the time has already come, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear it will come to life. It's given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Just to be open, I think, is the challenge to, to it when there's a character that's so iconic. The Father judges no one. But I tell you this, so that you may be saved. Well, based on the text that I have read, you know, there's that, that, that beautiful sense of, of unpushed authority. You've got conflict very early on in John compared to the other Gospels. And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Now, I can see just from those pictures that you do have a natural amphitheater there. Yes. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. You know, there, there's a few places in, in Israel where that is the case. Caesarea is, is one case where uh, it's right uh, on the edge of the sea and, and the, the prevailing wind brings the sound from the stage up to the amphitheater and uh, people can uh, hear very, very clearly without any uh, uh, mics or sound system. Do you use a, a sound system? We put a sound system in this last year, yeah. and it's a very subtle reinforcement because we found that some of our seniors were having a harder time hearing, yeah. and when the wind picked up, so we put this in, uh, and it's been very well received. Yeah. It, it's not very noticeable, but it just augments things a little bit for us. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, Stephen, we, you've been uh, notably silent here for the last few minutes. <laughs> uh, now, you played Jesus. Yes, uh, I do. Uh, t tell me you about your, uh, your connection with this. Yeah, I got to know Royal Sproul, I guess, six years ago. Who, who was the founder of who this? Who is the, uh, one of the co-directors. Oh, the co-directors. Yeah, okay. and he invited me to audition. He had seen me in a show at Rosebud Theater, and uh, I auditioned not with too many expectations, but... Uh, I got cast, that was five years ago, and this summer will be my, my fifth year playing Jesus. And it's, a, it's an, an amazing opportunity and gift to you. Now, most of us read, read the scriptures, as some of us have seen movies about Jesus. What's yeah. it like to actually play Jesus? What impact does it have on you, personally? Yeah, you know, I, a number of years ago, I, I heard a translation of Jesus' use of the Son of Man as the truly human one, mm. or the 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 example or you know um, and for me playing Jesus that has I guess it's put some flesh on that idea that that this is the most beautiful human being who has ever lived and his life is I guess it, it's, it's an example of what it means to truly be human yeah. also his relationship with his father um, there's been a journey for me as an actor. We've, we've been trying to work out how much does Jesus know at what point in the story. In the previous Matthew, Matthew and Mark based story, um, there was, it was more of a sense of Jesus is a human being in direct relationship with the Father. And so it's kind of an exploration of how do I, how do I play this role as though I'm always talking to God? And every moment of the show, every miracle, um, before different points, there's a chance for me, kind of as, as the actor, to actually talk to God, but also as the character Jesus to talk to God. And then how do I live that out in the rest of my life? That, I guess, I've had a little taste of what it might be like for three hours to just walk moment by moment in conversation with the Father. Can I now let Jesus teach me how to do that in the rest of my life. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're playing Jesus for those three hours. You're, you're rehearsing. You're, you're in that role for mm -hmm. quite, a, quite, a, quite a while. And then you go home, mm -hmm. and you've got a wife, and you've got, have you got kids? Two boys, yeah. Two boys. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever just say to yourself, ooh, I better watch myself here. I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Jesus to a lot of those people out there. Well, yeah, th there is there's an element of that where 
I mean, there's a lot of joking about it. Yeah. Um, my friends at church joke about, well, Jesus comes to our church, you right. know, and I'm yeah. like, it's funny, but you know, we got to watch that. Um, there's there's a there's a real sense that I guess th there's a there's a mantle, if if you will, that playing this role, particularly when I'm within the cast at the Passion Play, and when I'm interacting with the audience after each performance, we we hang out and kind of talk to people if they want to hang out. Um, a lot of the kids want to come and meet me. A lot of them think I am Jesus, you know, mm. and so that line kind of gets blurred. So I. Even within the, the cast, there's a lot of kids in, in the cast. Um, how can I represent Jesus as best as, as I can with those people? But then, yeah, how do I do that at, at home?